Well, a topic that's really got us talking this morning. With the cost of living crisis coming up, younger people are looking abroad for a better, more cost-effective lifestyle. Yeah, rising mortgage rates, inflated taxes and stagnant wages are sparking fears of a mass exodus of skilled workers emigrating from the UK in search of higher pay and better work-life balances. And already nearly 10,000 doctors left the UK medical workforce last year. And previous analysis shows that around half plan to move overseas according to the GMC. Now, could younger Brits follow suit? Well, with us this morning to talk to us about the concerns of the younger generations is the Intergenerational Foundation co-founder, Angus Hanson. Good morning to you, Angus. I find this topic really fascinating, not least because my best friend has moved to the other side of the world, having qualified as a doctor here, um, just simply because she could have a better life over there. This is a huge problem, not least if we're training up medics in Scotland, where it's completely free. They get all of their training for free and then they qualify and they say, thanks for that. And off they go with their doctor's qualifications and and earn elsewhere. Absolutely. And they're, they're voting with their feet. Mm. Um, they're, they're, I think they're saying it's a combination of things that they're treated so badly here in terms of very high tax rates, mm. very high housing costs. Um, and they're looking at the other side and saying, well, things are more attractive there. Sometimes doctors can double their pay by going to Australia or, or the US. Mm. Um, and it's, it's lifestyle thing. This is a big, a big deal. Um, pay and lifestyle. Mm. And we're just not offering them what we, what we should be offering. Mm. Yeah, I've had friends, um, anaesthetists, who've done exactly the same thing and moved to Australia, and they, they have, like, double the pay and a much, much nicer lifestyle. Um, how much of this um, do you think is because we historically found out that people would, would come with those skills to Britain, but now we're seeing a complete inversion. How did we get to that place? Yes, absolutely. I mean, th- th- we're looking at a brain drain in the past... Um, we've had a brain gain. Mm. We've, as it were, been stealing or poaching um, doctors and, and medics for, from other countries. Um, I think we've we got to that place because of our, the way we've treated young people. Mm. I mean, it's very much a question of intergenerational fairness. Mm. I mean, older people do so well relatively out of the system in terms of um, the universal benefits um, and in terms of the way that pensions are... Uh, Protected, the triple lot, yeah, it, benefiting it, those millionaire pensioners, about a third of them. Absolutely, yes. We've got three million um, older people living in millionaire uh, household, mm-hmm. households. Um, I think we've also got the problem that, that, that young people are, are paying such a high rate of tax. Mm. It's not just tax, it's also national insurance and then student loan repayments. So it's actually about 42%, um, maybe 43%, that they pay... Um, on any extra income that they earn. So what's the solution to all of this? Because if you're sitting in Downing Street thinking, hang on a minute, oh my goodness, uh, we can't lose all our brightest and our best. This is the foundation, the backbone of future generations of Britain, future prime ministers, whatever it might be. How do you tackle it? Because at the moment, politically, they say we have to protect our pensioners because they vote for us. I'm talking about the Conservatives here. Absolutely. But if they go for the youngsters and, as you say, reduce taxes, all the rest of it, we've all been discussing in the, in yeah. the wake of the, of the autumn statement that we have this high tax burden because we are in unprecedented times and it's unfortunate, but we have to kind of see it in a kind of post-war footing, don't we, with the war in Ukraine as well. It's very difficult for young people, but it's a necessary evil. I think the first thing the government has to do, and indeed the Labour Party, is send a message to young people that they care. Um, Nothing was mentioned about young people in the last budget statement. Um, It's a question of saying this is a country for young people. I mean, they often say no country for young men, uh, or or women, actually. And and we're we're making it that sort sort of country. So it's partly a a message. It's partly about specific policies. What we would like to see is a a change so that every government policy is assessed in terms of its intergenerational fairness. 